As we discussed in last episode, the tulip bulbs had risen to tremendously high prices. More and more people joined the tulip trade, hoping to buy a couple of bulbs now and sell them for a profit later. But the price only increased because people were expecting it to increase. Now, you might have thought to yourself, how is this any different from gold or company shares today? People often buy it in the hopes that it will be worth more in the future. The difference here is that both of these goods provide actual value to many people and are thus valuable for more than just being a tradable good. We use gold in wedding rings, a medium of exchange and in electronics. It creates value for you. Jewelry, while being a luxury, still provides value. If, like in the past, you can only buy something using gold, then you will want gold in order to buy things you want to have. And electronics are valuable, so you can watch my videos. Likewise, company shares give you value because you now own a part of a company and you receive a dividend. And sure, a tulip has value because it's pretty, but it's not 10 years of salaries pretty. This is what makes a bubble a bubble. The actual value of the product is a lot lower than the amount of money for which it is traded. And the price was just going up endlessly it seemed. What is important to remember is that nobody at the time knew for certain what would happen. This was the first bubble, so nobody was sure what would happen in the end. The very idea of a bubble didn't exist yet. There was no previous experience to draw upon. To most people, it just seemed like business as usual. Most people. But not all. The prices were becoming so high that some people couldn't help but wonder if maybe, just maybe, the prices were too high. If maybe, just maybe, they wouldn't keep increasing in price in the future. And if maybe, just maybe, they should sell their tulips before the price would drop. But even though this quiet had been building, the end still came sudden and unexpected. It is the evening of February 5th, 1637. Traders have come together inside an inn in the Dutch city of Haarlem. The men buy a drink, light a cigar and warm up at the fire. Soon the trading is about to begin. As men take their seats, the first bubble is presented. It is a small bulb, weighing less than half a gram. It's of a valuable breed, but not even close to mature yet. The men start bidding and it's sold for 56 guilders, about two months worth of salaries for a carpenter. Next, another man shows his tulips, this time on a piece of paper. It reads that the owner of this contract will be able to collect a bulb weighing about five grams, still not mature yet. The men look at each other, but nobody makes an offer. Nobody thinks they can make a profit on this bulb. Nobody is willing to take the risk. Eventually an offer is made, but it's lower than expected. It is sold for only 10 guilders. That's okay, the trader thinks. He will just make a profit the next time. This isn't so bad. This is just a one-time setback, right? Another tulip trader comes and shows his own wares. A piece of paper is presented. A mature bulb weighing over 50 grams. Again, the men look around. Again, nobody bites. And again, the merchants only buy it for a much lower price than expected. The men start getting nervous. The price appears to be going down, not up. They have tulips of their own. Tulips that are now worth far less than at the beginning of the evening. So they decide to sell their tulips now, instead of waiting for the price to drop even further. And as soon as some traders start selling, the price goes down because there are now more tulips being sold. So in order to compete with the other traders, they now have to lower their price. But, as the prices get lower, more traders sell their tulips, meaning they are forced to lower the prices even more, leading to even more people selling, leading to even lower prices, meaning more people sell, meaning lower price. This cycle continued throughout the evening, until by the end of the night, prices had fallen dramatically. By some estimates, prices had dropped by as much as 95%. 95% in a single night. And what happened in Haarlem spread to other cities. Some traders decided to be crafty and take a horse to the nearest city and sell all their now worthless bulbs before the price in other cities would crash as well. And as buyers, sellers and collectors traveled, prices crashed across the country. 
Within four days, the bubble had burst across the Dutch Republic. So what happened? Why did nobody see this coming? And an even more important question, how come this cycle has repeated itself so many times since the first crisis? Why wasn't the first financial bubble also the last? Well, this question can, in large part, be explained with one simple answer. Trust. During the bubble, there were prominent traders who everybody looked up to as sources of trustworthy information. And they said that tulip bulbs are a good investment. So if you don't know enough about the business to make your own assessment, you trust somebody else's. Just as you trust a car mechanic about cars, a carpenter about wood, and a doctor about medicine. And so, people trust the traders about trade. But what happens if they are wrong? Well, you have a bad investment at best, and a financial bubble at worst. To compare this with a modern day example, the crisis of 2008 happened because we trusted otherwise trustworthy rating agencies on so-called subprime mortgages. They said they were good investments, while in reality they were not. And so banks, investors, and borrowers trusted them to be safe investments. But when it turned out they were not, the bubble burst, and an economic crisis was created. Just as people trusted tulips to be a safe investment because other, more knowledgeable, more experienced traders said they were. And when it turned out they weren't, the bubble burst, and people lost a lot of money. I hope you learned something here. Not just a fun story to tell at a party or at the dinner table, but I hope that you learned some actual economic concepts. That a financial bubble isn't created by a couple of evil people sitting in a room plotting doom, but rather, it's a process of one risky investment after another. In the first episode, we talked about how tulips were introduced to the Netherlands and became an expensive luxury product. Then merchants created a lucrative, albeit exclusive trade in tulips. Then a future contract was introduced, allowing people to trade papers stating the ownership of tulips, rather than the physical flowers themselves. That led to more people trading in them, and as more people traded, the price went up. Until eventually, it just didn't anymore, and then it crashed. So who is to blame here? Was it the original traders? The futures contract? Allowing new people to join the trade? Or are none of them to blame? And is this just a course of events? leading to an unfortunate end result. You tell me, I'm not going to tell you what to think. I think my audience is smart enough to form their own opinion. But I hope that now you understand how an economic bubble happens. That this is not some evil master plan set in motion years ago. But rather, a series of seemingly good decisions that benefited the individual, but led to the collapse of the trade for the whole collective. If you like this video, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like it. My next video will start a new series on the Aztec Empire. If you want to see that and other videos as soon as it comes out, press the subscribe button.